Okay, I've weighed up all the pros and cons, and what I've decided to do is... <laughs> yep, that's right. I rejected the offer from Brighton for 19.5 million, and I'm keeping Steve Mounier at the club until probably the end of the season, because I do need him here. And also because my other options had retired already. Hello, welcome back to Attempting Not To Get Sacked. Another episode, another surprise. What have we got in store? I literally don't know. I'm just editing this now, so... I don't know what happens in the episode. I mean, I played the game, but I don't know what happens in the episodes. I hope I'm as excited as you are. But as usual, if you are still enjoying the series, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment, stalk me on social media, do whatever you want. Except name your kids after me. Don't do that. I mean, imagine naming your kid Christopher Proud. I don't know how my mom gets on with it. I should ask her next time. In the last episode, we took on Carlisle United away from home in the FA Cup and beat them by three goals to two, although we were 3-0 up at half-time. And the results after that have been a bit, hmm, um, I mean, that doesn't really explain it, but they've been, uh, well, I am pleased to announce our first signing of deadline day, and the only reason I have to announce it now is because he scored in the most recent games that we've played. But joining us from West Bromwich Albion for £9 million is Oli Burke, a right winger who is going to strengthen that side of midfield for us because Kachunga isn't playing very well at the moment. But a great option to have, and £9 million is not a bad purchase in the championship. Also, because the philosophy at Huddersfield seems to be to buy players from Germany, at least Oli Burke has some experience of Germany. But as you can tell from our most recent results, they've not been too bad. Although our lead at the top of the table has been cut to only a point ahead of Norwich. But in the game against Portsmouth, where we won 3-0, Oli Burke scored on his debut after four minutes with his close-range strike. In the clash against the top two, uh, Steve Mounier scored after 25 seconds, which is his first goal since Boxing Day, and it's taken him about a month and a half to score. Maybe I should have sold him. Ralder Thomas also clinched the game for us against Bradford in the derby when we were 1-0 down. And then against Stoke in the FA Cup, Sam Vokes put them into the lead with 15 minutes left on the clock. But Ralder Thomas did force extra time with his late strike in the 90th minute. Uh, but Stoke obviously went and thrashed us completely in extra time as I went on the attack and we just fell apart. And including this uh, scissor kick from Julian Ngoy. How has that gone in? We did lose 3-0 to playoff hopefuls Cardiff and draw 1-1 against Blackburn, which means that we aren't in the greatest run of form going into our next game against Preston North End away. And it really doesn't help when my strikers are just misfiring all the time at the moment. I found out that the 3-0 win over Portsmouth was our first win in five games and also our first league win in 2020. I mean, that is shocking for a team that is still top of the league. How are we top of the league when we're playing like that? Actually, probably because all the other teams around us are playing shit at the moment. Lars Kachunga also came to me and said that my favourite to strengthen the squad in the January transfer window means that he is seriously considering his future, which is fantastic news because I've signed a player to replace him anyway. So I've definitely strengthened the squad. I play right field too. So? Well, are you better than me? Well, I never met you, but yes. Adama Diakabe scored a hat-trick for the under-23s against Fylde away from home, and I thought to myself, maybe it's time to bring him back into the fold, because obviously hudson Adoy still isn't there yet in terms of match fitness, and Adama Diakabe is a fantastic option to use. He pulled his ankle ligaments the day after. I feel like this happens all the time at the moment. Oh, one player goes into form, I'm considering playing him, he gets himself injured for a few weeks. I had another question about Steve Mounier a few days after the January transfer window closed, and I said that he's going no Nowhere. Now I've got to hope they don't find him in the airing cupboard I've locked him into. Khan Iron has also come to me and said he's not happy with the amount of first team football he's been playing recently, despite the fact that I've played him in the last six games in a row. I generally think it's Ben Gibson trying to prank me here. Well, surprise, motherfucker. I'm talking to Ben Gibson, he's struggling because he's not in the team recently. Well, until he apologises, then he won't be playing. Oh, now he's changed his tone, hasn't he? It doesn't mean that I'm going to play him, though. Let's get him into the squad for the next game, Paul. Sergio Gomez also got second in Young Player of the Month for February. I mean, the bloke's been playing left mid for us, seeing as Callum hudson odoi has been injured, so... Sergio Gomez has also been playing left mid rather than his normal number 10 spot, so... I am a tactical genius. Guardiola, Proudiola. I mean, they're similar levels to me. I didn't even know about the screen that you can check the relationships with your players in your squad. And I found out that Steve Mounier is actually very distant to me. I mean, don't go breaking my heart, Steve. Please. 
Maybe I should have sold him. My head of youth development also came to me and said that the youth candidates that played against the under 18s, none of them are likely to break into the first team. I mean, what a waste of time then. Huddersfield clearly isn't a hotbed of footballing talent. Maybe I'm going to have to bring more foreigners into the country then. But into the game against Preston North End we go and we stick with the same system we played against Carlo United away. Uh, but there are a few changes to the side. Dean Henderson returns to the squad to play in between the sticks. The back four sees a debut on the series for Sergio Regulon, who plays at left back whilst Fabian Shaw also makes his debut on the series partnering Khan Ayan at centre back. Liam Kelly will partner Philip Billing in the centre midfield as he replaces the injured Sergi Sampa. And we also have the returning Callum Hudson Adoy, who is now finally match fit to take part in some games, finally. Our top goal scorer is back, boys. And we've gone with a ball change as I've dropped Steve Mounier to the bench because he's not performing very well at the moment. And Marvin Sordell will lead the line for us, followed up by Nick Powell in behind him. I mean, I know I've made some ball changes in this side, you know, putting Marvin Sordell up front by himself in a game which we have to win. But I have faith in the boy, just like every other player that I've ever signed and that I've wasted money on. And it is a big game because if Stoke, who are currently second, beat Portsmouth away and we don't win away at Preston, we lose top spot again. And I'm under pressure. I have to deliver promotion this year. And the decision to play Marvin Sordell up front was vindicated as Fabian shares ball over the top, found Sordell through on goal. And what does he do? He puts it in the back of the net. We're winning this game, boys. There's nothing anyone could do about it. Da 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 da. Sordellinio. And Marvin Sordell was involved again as Dick Powell found it, but his shot was blocked. And then Ollie Burke picked up the ball, but hit the post. I mean, this is easy. This is really easy. Preston aren't even going to score this game. And we took the lead into half time. Easy. I, I mean, I, how many more times do I have to say easy on this episode? Easy. Oli Berg then started taking the game to Preston and he cut inside from the wing and started running at the defence and it played him Liam Kelly whose shot was well saved by the keeper. Raul de Thomas came off the bench to replace Nick Powell as we tried to solidify the game and it pretty much instantly worked as Preston equalised straight after through Callum Robinson who by the way I tried to sign in January because he's got 15 goals this year. That's the same amount as Callum hudson Adoy. Juninho Bakuna then came off the bench to replace Liam Kelly in the midfield. And then he was involved as he played the ball to Sordell, who then laid it off to Raul de Thomas to give us the 2-1 lead. And that's how the game ended. See you later, Preston. We're not playing you next year because you're going down and we're going up. Although Preston are 10th in the league. I don't know why I said they're going down. They're staying down, but they're not going down. And Marvin Sordell got mad in the match. You love to see it. I was trying not to mention that phrase all episode, but you can't help it. You love to see it. That's twice I've done it now. 